Hi, my name is Colin Sia, and I'm very honored to be invited by the IDF to share in this virtual conference. Uh, I'm from Ministry of Design. We are based in Singapore, and we'd like to share with you some projects that we've been working on before and now even through the pandemic. Projects with a particular slant, uh, in particular because we feel that the pandem pandemic has made us much more aware of the need for the connection of nature for being part of the overall uh, balance of nature and the system of nature around us uh, and not so much siloed in an urban environment all the time. We have needed to escape from this urban environment to nature and we want to share some projects with that in mind at the heart of it all. They are primarily uh, hospitality projects with a scattering of some residential as well as other types of work. So let me begin. The projects we'll like to share with you be, uh, start with this one called A Thousand Moons. Uh, it's located in Anzi and it's a Kuro collection hotel. And it's special to us because when we went to the site, we realized that this project has all the aspects of a environment that allow us to reflect and think about man's relationship with nature. And one thing we discovered when we went to the site was not just the beautiful landscape, uh, bamboo forest, this is where the famous movie uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon was filmed, but it also embodies something quite unique. Um, it allowed us to slow down time. When we felt, when we went there, we felt as if time slowed down, uh, we almost could observe how nature was developing, like the different increments of the bamboo shoots. Um, there was a quarry nearby uh, to see the geological formations. And every night, the moon would, would uh, form, rise, and then set in the, in the sky, uh, marking a day being over. And as we spent more time on site, we realized that time really seemed to slow down. We wanted to uh, capture the spirit of the essence of time, especially for busy people who come from the city. This is a huge luxury to be able to come to an environment like this, uh, which is poetic, which is an escape, and to put away your phone, put away the television, and then just rediscover the essence of time. We wanted to express this through a series of materials, uh, ones which embodied the layering of time, the texture of time, uh, things which seemed almost as if time had created them uh, themselves. We wanted to have a palette that was also incredibly calming and soothing and putting it all together with the natural materials and the original uh, material palette that we selected, we created rooms which were almost um, monastic in nature, reflect, places to reflect, places to gather your thoughts, places to experience time. Uh, and we feel that this connection to time is actually really a connection to nature. Nature and time have so much uh, to do with each other. They're inextricably linked. The pace of time is also the rhythm of nature. Uh, and in our urban environments, we sometimes move so rapidly and so quickly that we fall out of sync with the rhythms of nature. And this is a place, a hotel, where as we designed it, as we branded it, as we did all the uh, furniture selection, we found that this is a way for us to reconnect and find the inner primal clock within each person. Moving projects, I have a, quite a few to show, so I'll just run through this quite uh, briefly. This is a project that's opening soon. Um, it's under construction and due to open uh, at the end of this year or early next year. It's in Alishan, which is a really beautiful mountain range in Taiwan. And it's for the Indigo brand, uh, where we did all the interior design. And we designed it to be a journey of discovery. We asked ourselves, why do people come to Alishan? And the reason is for two, two things, primarily the culture of the tribes uh, and also the natural setting and the beauty. So we wanted the hotel to be a reinforcement, uh, a sort of an echo of the beauty of the landscape and also the uh, treasure of the culture. So we organized a series of um, touch points which formed in total a narrative uh, that started 
from the entrance of the building all the way through into the different public spaces. And the idea was to begin as if you're in a forest, come through um, a natural uh, environment and into a more cultivated village space. So this is the reception lobby. We abstracted um, these almost art installation-like sculptures to create spaces, to create uh, lighting features. And this is the essence of walking through a bamboo forest. And as you approach uh, the end of the bamboo forest, you come to this sort of mount mountain wall. And the mountain wall is where you, you check in. And after you check in, there's like a cave-like condition on the side, which you walk through. And after you emerge from the cave, you enter the village where uh, the cultivated fields, uh, where the tribes people uh, live, where they plant their agriculture. You can sit amongst it uh, in the all-day dining where there's an abstracted, abstracted version of the agricultural fields. Um, and also you notice the very strong graphic pattern drawing from the tribal uh, culture and, and um, signifiers, the color, the shapes themselves. And you'll see that what we did here was to uh, borrow from nature, but also overlap it with the cultural signifiers of the tribes, bringing the two together in a very nice balance. So on the rooftop, we created a series of almost like granite uh, hewn pools where you would be able to sit in an outdoor jacuzzi and enjoy the view. And this, these pools are also marked uh, with the tribal patterns and colors so that there's that combination of both the people behind the spaces in this village and also the natural backdrop uh, within which the people live. Um, moving countries from Taiwan to Indonesia, we have a project called Venue for the Jumeirah Hotel Group. And this project really is nature of another sort. We wanted to tap in the spirit of the land, what people believe in, what the local indigenous uh, culture celebrates uh, their colors, their um, craft, their reverence and respect for nature woven into the designs, the carving, the colors, the palette, uh, and also very much celebrating the climate because when you go here, you want to not be in an air conditioning and, and uh, air conditioned environment. You want to be, you know, enjoying the soft breeze on your skin. You want to enjoy the sun. Uh, in your in your on your body uh, because you know that's one of the hallmarks of being in such a beautiful landscape like this and wherever we could we played it up we got got rid of walls and windows uh, we left just overhanging roofs to, for some shading from the rain and from very very harsh sun but other than that you're encouraged to be outdoors as much as you can and even when you're not fully outdoors you're covered but looking out into the outdoors here in a sort of a bits up a club kind of fashion for an extension of the bar where you're able to watch the sunset uh, on these really loungy bits and be able to uh, hear the call of nature, the animals in the forest the, and all the environment around you. There was a part of this um, hotel complex, a specialty restaurant, and that was buried underground with a sky, open to sky courtyard. So as you descended the stairs, you wanted to create a, a sense of like being in a cave uh, and celebrating also the cuisine that was served here, which is uh, food that is cooked on hot coal. So you see the walls are covered with this sort of charred timber. The lights represent the ember glow of the cooking surfaces. Um, and even the metal uh, backing the banquette is something that is touched by nature. It is a reaction from heat uh, and it is a reaction that is part of a natural response of heat to the metal. And so you'll see abstracted sort of versions of what it's like to be in nature as well as actually being in nature itself. We place a whole series of alfresco dining uh, booths facing the ravine and the beautiful forest around it. And the cave-like theme continues uh, for the bar area where the space is almost as if it's hewn out of the rock.
And for the rooms, which are much lighter, more airy, uh, very breezy, there's a huge amount of space that we wanted to connect with nature. Uh, almost 50% of the room is uh, very close to an open balcony or in the balcony itself. Uh, so the breezes come through uh, and we played with certain kind of cheeky uh, expressions like having a sort of David area right beside the bathtub. So, you know, you could chat with your partner who was sitting inside the bathtub. Uh, and made it a very social setting. And then the view out to the wonderful surroundings, uh, always hearing, smelling, and seeing nature from any part of the room. So from hotels, I want to move to uh, a project which we recently completed, and it's um, it was very well awarded in the international awards uh, scene. It's called the City uh, Wealth Hub. It's for Citibank, and it's the largest wealth hub uh, in the world currently for Citibank. And the idea was how do you um, bring two things together, uh, the landscape of the outside into an indoor space, which is usually quite stuffy uh, and posh, which with the typical luxury cues. We wanted to replace those uh, conventional cues of luxury, which is chandeliers and marble, and replace them with a new symbol, which is the, the botany. And we thought that was appropriate because the green is not just beautiful, but it also represents a new symbol for um, a sustainable wealth, uh, a type of wealth that is not based on irresponsible and reckless moves, but based on very careful, deliberate, and future-friendly decision-making. So the building uh, is situated in, in uh, the heart of the shopping belt in Singapore called Orchard Road. And the space is over four floors and two of the floors are uh, part of this wonderful glass encased atrium where the walls and the roof are also glass. And the sequence of the experience begins very intentionally once you exit the lift and you are met at the concierge area where you are not necessarily sure what to expect next. It's almost like you're building anticipation. And as you're guided through, you go around the corner, down this um, passageway, and then you enter this incredibly beautiful, light-filled uh, garden space where there are these gorgeous uh, champagne-colored uh, planters that snake and turn and twist through the space and house the plants in a kind of primal way, but yet in a very organized choreographed way because of the planters. You can sit in casual uh, settings and have a discussion with your relationship manager here, or you can also, uh, if your business is a bit more serious and it requires some kind of privacy, uh, you can move through uh, the garden conservatory and you can find your way past the casual seating to a formal meeting pod. And this meeting pod is very well designed to be fully uh, acoustically private. It has air conditioning, it's got fire suppression system, um, it's acoustically treated, and there's a television uh, set inside with the AV system. So it's basically a full on comprehensive meeting room but in the middle of the garden. So when you're having your discussions, you can look around, you can see the green around you, which is really, really quite special uh, and a unique experience, which we felt was a new way to celebrate um, high and ultra high network banking. Um, the project has been very well received. Uh, it was a competition which the client um, conducted and we won the competition. And the concept was pretty much built as, as, uh, as the finished product with, with very little fundamental change. And you see here in the night scenario, uh, the garden comes to life in a much more twinkly kind of, of a dim way. There are events that occur here. So uh, at night, the space is also used uh, occasionally. Uh, and to support these events, you can clear the chairs to make a cocktail standing area for 100 people. Uh, you can be supported by the bar. So instead of just having uh, drinks served from a closed pantry, we celebrated the act of service and also community and life and culture by having an island bar where a lot of activity is centered around and becomes one of the, the, the cause of this entire space and experience. And looking at it from the sky, uh, we see that there are two floors and the floor above it um, happens to be 
the banking facility that is for the even greater net worth individuals uh, and it's more exclusive and it looks over uh, you can tell that the material palette for this area called the city goal private client uh, has become much more uh, rich and intense uh, to underline the uh, increased sort of um, sense of sophistication uh, that we wanted to imbue the space with and as you come around the seating uh, and the bar has become much more uh, so quiet. It has become more jewel-like, uh, smaller in scale. The seating is for two to four people. Um, the bar is also a lot more sort of bespoke, the way it's designed and the service from this bar. And what's particularly interesting is there's a lookout point from which you can glance over and see uh, the garden below and have people look up at you and sort of envy you. So we call this fondly the envy corner. Uh, the seats uh, where whilst you're waiting or whilst you're having a drink. Uh, and then the corridors, all always peppered with uh, lush greenery, um, le leading to some support meeting rooms that support the garden pods. Um, and what's interesting is these are all front of house spaces, but half of the area of this project was dedicated to back of house spaces. And so now I'm shifting to the office spaces for the staff where we did not want them to feel as if they were um, not part of this wonderful lush botanical conservatory experience. We wanted to also uh, allow them to share in the same spirit so that there was no disconnect between front of house and back of house spaces. And so here in an open office plan, uh, you see where the staff and relationship managers can sit and it's well lit with uh, greenery uh, in certain core areas and very beautifully detailed to feel exclusive as well and not be treated like your typical back of house spaces. We didn't want it at all to be fluorescent lit and part partitioned. We wanted it to be a lot more lifestyle driven, uh, very much befitting the people who use this space and um, their mental also well-being. So this is the City Wealth Project. And from uh, hotels to sort of retail, I just want to show one or two uh, residential projects. This is a project that is under design and going to begin construction shortly uh, in Kuala Lumpur and it's for a, a high-end um, condominium development. And what we did was we took nature as a starting point as an inspiration, but we created rather fantastical and novel ways to appreciate nature. So it's not nature in your um, jungle or forest um, idea, but it's as if nature has almost a fantasy-like char character to it, uh, almost dream-like character to it. So this is the entryway uh, where there's this sort of floating pavilion uh, and you'll see uh, oversized uh, botanical sculptures. Uh, we have planting um, in the common shared spaces for function rooms. You know, we have rooms that are inspired, inspired by burrows uh, where light comes through filtered very softly, the color scheme and the draping plants all emphasize the sense of being in a burrow. And there are different types of spaces from burrow to being inside almost like the molecular structure of a plant in a kaleidoscopic kind of fashion uh, where things are you know, very geometric and colorful uh, and abstract in nature and all inspired by, by the landscape around us, but in a far more fantastical fashion. So you see again, the sort of blown, over, blown up oversized uh, sculptures uh, in the distance of, of uh, flower-like um, um, totems. And these also form central sort of uh, anchor points for some of these um, shared communal spaces. And then on the upper levels, we have areas where uh, there are health facilities that happen, where exercise can occur, and it's open to a gorgeous view. So we created uh, yet another kind of like oversized garden. Uh, and you see here a view of it uh, in one of the common spaces. And there are about eight or 10 of these all over uh, the condominium complex, uh, over three, uh, a podium building and two towers. So quite interesting because we have nature that's natural integrated in actual landscape and then we have nature that is abstracted and fantastical that is in very urban uh, landscapes and um, we I think being 
inhabitants in very busy, bustling cities, we're very conscious of the need for the, the mind to relax and rest and the soul to find sanctuary. So for um, a project in the heart of uh, the CBD in Singapore, we wanted to create an urban sanctuary where the, the inhabitants, either office workers or residents could feel like there was calm, a sense of calm in the heart of the city. And we did this through textures and shapes, uh, colors and uh, patterns movement that was organic but yet calming, uh, greenery, actual greenery inside interior spaces. Uh, and we wanted to sort of reimagine what the office lobby could look like. Uh, it could be a lot more lifestyle driven, it could be a lot more botanical in nature, it didn't have to feel so stiff and corporate. And I think this gives the uh, inhabitants, the office workers who come here on a daily basis, a sense of calm, a sense of restfulness. Uh, and we wanted to also um, pre present that spirit for the residential sections as well, but in a much more sort of casual, almost uh, decorative fashion, so it's not so built in. Now moving gears a little bit from uh, interiors to architecture, here are a series of uh, hotels primarily, which uh, we're excited to have worked on. Uh, and this project, another Indigo Hotel in Taiwan. And Tai'an in particular is a location where there are many uh, hot springs. And the hotel was about celebrating the spirit of the land and being able to feel like you're integrated in nature, but yet with a twist. Uh, so what we did was we studied the existing um, landscape and noticed the relationship between rivers and uh, the forest around it. And we abstracted them through silhouetting and created a massing model that allowed us to sit the towers where all the hotel rooms were on top of a podium. And the podium is, you know, for larger spaces like the ballrooms, um, some of the public facilities. Uh, but on top of the podium, with the great natural light, we set the pool and beside it, the all-day dining and the health facilities. Uh, and this pool is not in view when you first approach the building because it's high up, it's like an infinity edge pool. And from the bottom, the relationship is as if um, the tree of the, the tree like canopy of the tower sit on top of a riverbank, uh, on top of a body of water. And you are given a clue of that body of water because when you first approach the hotel, uh, there is a cascading waterfall that suggests that there's water above. So we wanted to sort of tear the experience from the bottom to sense that something was going on above, but then from above to have a whole new experience of the infinity edge water body. So that's for the main building and further up the hill, uh, because we wanted to celebrate the notion of the, the, the onsen or the bathhouse, we created special standalone building just for that, that you'd have to travel either by buggy or walk to. So it's a sense of uh, sequence, sense of distancing, uh, sense of, of, of arrival, and also almost like a choreographed ritual to get to this place. And inside, uh, we wanted to create something that was incredibly sort of uh, timeless and geometric that allowed primarily for framing of the landscape uh, so that you would be able to almost see the landscape as paintings uh, in the distance when you set inside these pools. Um, a very exciting project that we proposed for a winery outside of Beijing. Uh, and Beijing has has outside of Beijing has surprisingly not many people know this, but some really good vineyards and some good um, wine that, that's produced. And we are asked to design a small boutique hotel uh, in the midst of one of these vineyards. And so we're very inspired again, uh, not so much by the wild nature, but in this way, a pruned and kind of cultivated nature, which is the lines and rows of the vineyards. So we saw that uh, in the, on the site, there are all these vineyards that are already grown. And we said, um, instead of taking it all away, can we preserve most of it, but reserve a plot in the middle of it or at some portion of the vineyard uh, for the hotel? And we'll use the lines of the vineyard to inspire and to order the walls of the hotel. 
And as you can see here, they rise out of these parallel lines, which are all aligned with the grow, growing vines, and they swell up and come back down like, like mountainous landscape. And the beautiful thing about it is that from certain angles, as you move around the hotel, the hotel changes in nature from something that it looks like a series of uh, interventions and slots in the landscape uh, to something a bit more sculptural and solid and heavy from the side view. And as you move 360 around the vineyard and as you observe the hotel, it's constantly changing and evolving, just like how the season impacts the grapes and how it's allowed to grow. Uh, and there's a season for everything. So there's that whole notion of change uh, as you moved around the site. And we wanted from the road for the hotel to look quite abstract, uh, almost like a large scale sculpture. But from inside, you get this wonderful vantage point for the rows and rows of grapes that were, that were growing all around you. So you really feel integrated as part of nature uh, even though it's a little bit more choreographed and cultivated. A uh, couple more projects. This one was a lovely uh, master plan architecture and landscape project that we did for W Hotels, uh, and it's a retreat. Um, so it's a resort W in Phuket, off Phuket, and an island off Phuket. Um, and it was quite fascinating because we all know that Ws need to be slightly more um, extroverted, slightly more exciting, than your typical uh, hotel. And for a resort, that was the same. It needed to be a little bit more innovative and a bit more W magic. So what we didn't want to do was your typical um, Thai thatched roof uh, villa. We wanted something much more modern, but also something appropriate. So when we went to the site um, and you approach by either speedboat or by helicopter, you realize that in the distance, when you're on the site, on the hills, looking out, you notice that there are these limestone outcroppings. Uh, you can see these limestone outcroppings from any of the 80 villas. Most of them are sea-facing, and then a couple of them are um, in the canopy of the forest, in like a jungle, so it's quieter, it's, it's a lot more atmospheric. You can hear all the crickets and all the wildlife very clearly. And then there is a spa building, an all-day dining a building, and some specialty restaurants as well. So um, we worked very hard with the shape of the contours of the land, uh, wanting to emphasize the views, but also wanting to work with the terrain. Uh, and these are the limestone outcroppings that I mentioned. So in the distance, there are these thousands of years old limestone outcroppings, which we use as inspiration points for the villas. And then we crafted the villas in this kind of geometric shape, also as if they were uh, abstracted geometries of the limestone outcroppings. And you notice even the landscape around uh, the villas uh, have that sort of slightly more um, transformed feeling rather than primal rush, uh, lush and raw. But we left the lush and raw landscape all around, as you can see. So you're always seated, uh, swimming, or laying within sort of very primal nature, even though you're in something more abstract. Uh, we created these villas that had uh, glass on one side, open on the ends, and a solid wall. So the solid wall always acts as a buffer to your neighbor, so you can't look into each other's villas, which we felt was very important. You come in at the space, there's a dressing area, a bathroom at the back, open to sky bathtub, the bed, a bar, lounge, and then the pool deck uh, overlooking the ocean. So there's a section of it. And we took the same plan and rotated it for the suite buildings, but we changed some of the layouts to make it work. But the suite buildings have the entire length uh, of the long side facing the ocean. So views become much more uh, incredible because you're not just looking at it from one narrow viewpoint, you're looking at it from a very wide viewpoint. And besides these villas, there are the um, jungle canopy treetop. Uh, villas as well. And these were designed to be very fantastic. Uh, you walk through a bridge, you come into the building, there's an open deck with a pool, and then your living spaces are distributed in an L shape from the public space to the bathroom block to the actual sleeping area, as you can see here in the plan. So it's a very extensive plan, uh, very generous, and also makes it feel very special to be inside the canopy. In this case, completely surrounded and nestled in nature. 
And then there are also a few very large uh, presidential suites. And so you see this one here, uh, where there are two bedrooms and a huge party uh, living area. So that's for the W. Uh, and then for another resort uh, by a sort of boutique operator in Goa, India, we created this sense of again time. So we talked about time for the Thousand Moons project. That was about the sense of rhythm of time. Here, could we create something that defied time, that was completely timeless, uh, that if you looked at it, you couldn't tell whether it was an old ruin or whether it's a completely contemporary building. And we did this uh, as part of an overall experience, uh, designed even what the pickup would be like, either by car, by boat. Uh, and then as you approach the complex, we created this sense of timelessness with geometrical platonic shapes that are very basic, that have existed for thousands of years and use stone as the main cladding material from the local environment. Uh, so here, if someone is dressed in a very old, uh, thousand year old cultural outfit, you'd think this, these were Aztec ruins, for instance. Uh, but if they're dressed in something very contemporary, they would look very, very modern, almost future, uh, future forward looking. So we wanted to create that sense of strange sort of uh, defying of time. And I think we achieved it through, through these basic shapes. So here you see a series of uh, uniforms that we also designed for the uh, experience, uh, always pairing the modern with something traditional. So that's a bell from an old uh, temple in the area. And as you come out of the different public spaces, restaurants, spas, reception check-in, health areas, uh, at night, it would completely transform. Uh, and each of the spaces was very, very distinctive, uh, very vivid, and almost like inside uh, the hollow cavity of a rock. And the villas were placed in the landscape with some sculptural elements as well. And um, lastly, a project which is a mixed use, primarily residential, some commercial below uh, in China, in in an area called Tianjin, uh, and it's for, for Wanka. We were part of a competition uh, to propose a master plan for this area. And it's quite interesting because this whole location was beside a wetlands area. And we wanted to reclaim it, not just to live beside the wetlands, but to live inside the wetlands. So in order to live inside the wetlands, we created as if conceptually pulling the water into the development, as opposed to stopping the water on the edge of the development. And we also created these bridges that you had to cross over to get to the development. And the shapes and the facade design also was very organically inspired inspired by the wetlands. So you can see here all these bridgeways that you have to cross uh, to get to the development. And it makes you really feel like you're crossing water into the wetlands and they are living inside the wetlands. Um, and here's an image of the bridge that you cross. And it really feels like these reflecting ponds are part of the wetlands, uh, although they're just very shallow ponds. Uh, the facades have these beautiful cutout shapes. So behind it, it's all just like, you know, conventional uh, building construction uh, techniques with normal uh, curtain wall glass and uh, balconies with sliding glass doors. So you see here a view of the steps coming down to the wetlands and how the buildings really feel like they're integrated into the wetlands. Even the color scheme of them were very much carefully chosen for that reason. Um, and a view from the sky uh, and all the, the uh, areas that are to the north of the development are actual wetlands, but to the south of the development, they look like wetlands, but they're just uh, constructed and designed to feel that way by us. And then lastly, I'd like to end with one very small project. Uh, it's a very fun project. It was just released about uh, a month ago, and it's called The Garden Table. Uh, I did a collaboration with the uh, Spanish surfaces brand called Cosentino. Um, and they asked me to design a unique piece of furniture to launch a new um, material that they have, a Depton material, which is this beautiful texture of almost like terracotta. Uh, and it's called Umbra and uh, is from the craftisan range. And I, was, I really loved it. So I conceptualized a table, but it's not a typical table. It's a table that's inspired from having to work from home a lot. I made a, a cavity in the middle of the table where you can put a plant, any kind of plant you want, whether it's a lush tropical plant like this or more uh, cactus plant or a more willowy plant. Um, and 
you sit here as if you are outside in the garden and the, the surface of the material really makes you feel like you're outdoors as well. Uh, and there are three legs, all from solid Balao timber, which is a local timber in Southeast Asia. Uh, and you can place your computer, your chair, your books, uh, and small plants in this area. So when you work, and you and so many of us work from home these days, you can really feel like you're bringing a bit of the outdoors into the space. Um, and that's a close-up of the material where you can see the texture. And so I think the notion of nature can be uh, portrayed in so many ways from this scale, which is very small, all the way to large master plan scale. Uh, and in so many ways, either natural, actual, primal nature, uh, like in the, some of the resorts, or uh, abstracted, fantastical nature, like in some of the urban projects. Uh, with that, I'd like to stop sharing my screen. And I'd like to uh, thank the organizers for allowing me to share a little bit of what we've been working on in, over the past few years, and also a message of um, optimism that as the pandemic is dealt with um, through science and medicine and also government policies and things open back up, we will not necessarily just revert to our old ways without thinking about what we can do better. Can we cut down unnecessary travel? Can we travel uh, in a way that's very rich and fulfilling? Uh, can we integrate nature as part of our day-to-day -day thinking and experience as designers a lot more so that we're more in touch and connection with nature and also the rhythms of time and nature. Uh, so all of these questions are something which we've been asking ourselves and also how the balance between life and work can be a little bit more uh, rich and real. So we've, as part of that in MOD, um, began to start this new initiative, which we call MOD 2.0, where our designers can work from anywhere in the region uh, remotely. And so you don't have to be stuck in an apartment in Singapore. You can be uh, on the beach in Bali or on the hillside in Koh Samui, or you can be by a lake in, in uh, Hangzhou, and you can still be working uh, and enjoying a certain lifestyle. So this is something that I think the pandemic has really made us all sit up and think about. Uh, and of course, there are more questions to ask, but let's hope, uh, at least I hope personally, that we won't stop asking these questions. We'll use the pandemic as a very positive step forward in the evolution of the design industry and also of our design results. So with that, I thank you again for your time. and. Uh, Hope to see everyone in person uh, when the pandemic lifts and we can really get together again. Thank you. Bye-bye.